Welcome to our series on Ireland's native trees. In this episode, we're going to be talking about one of our very few conifer species. We're going to be talking about juniper trees. In Ireland, we only have three different species of conifer tree. We have Scots pine with its hard pine cones. We have yew trees and we have juniper. And both yew and juniper have little adapted scales which look like berries to us. And in fact, they act like berries, they attract wildlife and give beautiful color and beautiful scent while holding and protecting their seeds. Juniper trees are one of the toughest and most widespread of all of the conifers. There's over 600 species of conifer across the world and juniper tree is the most widespread of them all. You will find juniper trees that in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco, you'll find them on the sun-baked cliffs of Portugal, southern Portugal, stretching into the Med. You'll find them up in Iceland, you'll find them in Alaska, and you'll find them here on the edges of our cliffs along the west coast of Ireland. Juniper trees were once abundant across the island of Ireland. Pollen records show that they started to colonise the country shortly after the ice retreated, 15 to 14,000 years ago, and spread right up and down the north and south of Ireland as a low spreading shrub. Nowadays, you'll only find juniper on the tough, rocky outcrops. You'll find them along the west coast of Ireland, in some of our hills, and a few little spots in the Midlands. There's not many places. It's not as common a tree as it once was. Juniper is unusual because most people would recognize it as a shrub. It spreads out, whereas sometimes it is able to grow upright, but usually you'll find it in its prostrate form. When it can grow upright, it can go up to six, seven, eight meters or so. It's a long living tree, grows very slowly and can live for at least 200 years. And of course it's evergreen. It has these tough, tough little needles on it that give a little bit of color, a little splash of color to the hills right throughout the year. To identify juniper, more often than not, you'll find it in this creeping prostrate form, spreading out. And it has these very short, sharp little evergreen needles. And on the underside of the needles has a lovely little white stripe. And the needles are arranged in a little whirl, little circle around the stems. And then the wood itself, that slow, slow growing wood, has a very deep, rich brown color to it. It's a very aromatic tree. When you crush some of the needles, and you break them up and crush them, it gives off a strong, recognizable scent. Juniper has been used for many, many years in the past. It has been used as a medicinal plant, and in fact still is. You'll still find juniper in some diuretic medicines. And the oil that's extracted from both the wood and the needles has been used in the past as anti-infection, antibacterial, and it's also been used by burning it in houses to try and ward away both evil in the past and to help ward away infection. Juniper gives a lovely, refreshing scent. One of the secrets to juniper's success is that it's very adaptable and very tough. The places where you'll most often find it now in Ireland are in little rocky outcrops. It is able to grow in the thinnest of soils. It is able to tolerate acidic soils as well as calcareous soils. You'll find it on limestone and you'll find it amongst the drier, heathy bits of blanket bog habitat. And it gives us a little hint of what Ireland would have looked like to those very first settlers. Edges of Ireland like this, where we still have juniper and birch and hazel and some of those tough pioneering species that could cling on right onto the edges of our coastlines. So the first settlers, when they arrived in Ireland, they would have been very familiar with juniper and of course would have been familiar with its berries and with its properties. Juniper trees, like all of our native trees, are very important for biodiversity. Having been here for so long, our insects and the other animals, the larger animals, have got very used to them. This particular bush behind me here is full of spiders' webs, and spiders relying on these tough evergreen leaves to be able to set up their traps, catching a myriad of insects. In fact, out of the 1,400 species of moth, that we have in Ireland. Three of them rely exclusively on juniper. If we didn't have juniper, we would have three less species of moth. And it's not just the invertebrates that rely on juniper. Some of our larger mammals and some of the birds that will pass by rely on juniper and the abundance that it gives them. 
The berries that they produce are eaten by the foxes, they're eaten by hares, eaten by deer and other passing creatures. And of course the birds that pour through Ireland, the flocks of birds that come through in the autumn from north of here, the thrushes like our field fares and our red wings and our missile thrushes, they will pour through. They will eat up the berries and of course spread the seeds as a result. Juniper trees are under threat, like so many of our native trees. For something that was so abundant, you won't find juniper in many different habitats anymore, only in the toughest places where a lot of the grazing animals can't get to them. Some of our native mammals, like red deer, will eat away at the juniper. And of course, the sheep, if the numbers aren't kept in check, if the stocking numbers are too high, will eat down all that shrubbery. And a lot of those sheep, of course, can get into the toughest little crevices, the toughest little cracks in our cliffs and on our hilltops. Another threat for juniper is our unusual habitat of setting fire to wet mountainside like this in the hope that we bring back some vegetation for our grazing animals. But of course those fires destroy a huge amount of biodiversity and along with it destroy the juniper that gives shelter for those nesting birds that arrive in the summertime and give food for the birds that are passing through on their autumn migrations. One of the more unusual features of juniper is, yes, it's a conifer, but it has these little berry-like structures. They're actually adapted scales of cones. And when you look closely at them, you can see the little scales all wrapping around. And of course, they're protecting a number of seeds that are inside. Juniper is also unusual in that it has either male or female parts. So a juniper tree or bush is either male or female. An awful lot of our trees have both male and female on them. So they are wind pollinated, so they're relying on the moving air. And once those little flowers are pollinated, well then the berries mature after about two to three years. And they go some very beautiful colours, from the light, light kind of silver greys that they have, to a rich, rich light blue, and then as they mature into their deep juniper colour. Inside of those little berries, inside those adapted scales, are a bunch of seeds, up to 12 seeds which of course the birds or whatever animals are eating away at these berries will spread those seeds as they move around themselves. And then another clever adaptation that juniper has, another little trick it has, this amazing plant to be able to tolerate such tough growing conditions and such widespread different types of habitats, is that some of the seeds will mature within 18 months, some of the seeds won't mature for up to five years. So that gives it quite a large window, depending on what conditions are coming, if there's a cold spell, or if there's fires, or if there's an abundance of grazing animals, it gives juniper some chance.